Hi everyone, in this video I'd like to show you how to use Replit. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check our notifications and we're going to join the team for our class. And then secondly we're going to fork a project that was created for our first lab. And uh, we can work on the lab a little bit, um, show you how to add a statement and run your code. So uh, here I am in Replit. This is the home screen. And if I clicked on Teams at the moment, you'll notice I don't belong to any Teams. It's giving me the option to purchase a subscription where I can create my own Teams. Uh, so there are no Teams at this at this time. Uh, and when, when you first log in, you do not have any REPLs. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Notifications. And I've got a few extra here just because I was testing things out. But what you want to look for is this notification. You have been invited to join. And this is our class REPL. Yours might be slightly different based on what term it is and what class you're enrolled in. But what it will look like is um, the term. So it's SP is for spring. 21 is the year. Uh, my, the first four letters of my last name. And IT 1050. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And it's going to jump into the team. If you don't see this notification, then please send me an email right away so I, I know uh, to add you. It might be that you were not in the class roster before the class started uh, or when I sent the notification out um, to join the team. Okay, so inside of the team, uh, and, and by the way, you can, you can always jump to this menu, uh, click on Teams, and you'll see all of your teams listed. You might have multiple classes. Um, and click on the team and then uh, we're going to uh, fork a project so if you look under team projects um, you'll see this lab one and if we click start project uh, you didn't see the notification because it was off the uh, recorded area on the video but um, it did say forking project uh, and then it's going to open up the project in uh, kind of a developer window so um, this is the, I'm going to take this comment out so you can see more of the code. This is the starting file for our project. And um, what we have here is, first of all, we have a, a using namespace directive. What that's doing is it's pulling in code from a, a pre-existing library of code uh, that allows us to interact with the console window. Then we have the class definition or the uh, class header and uh, starts with the keyword class followed by the name of the class and then it uh, uh, encloses the body of the class in an open curly brace and closed curly brace and notice that in the files um, we have this main.cs this is the file that we're editing in later projects where we might have multiple files and you can click on either the file name or you can click on these tabs to switch back and forth between the files. Inside of our class we have one what we call method and this is a really specialized method. The main method in C, a, a C Sharp console application is the method that runs the first time uh, when we execute the program. So what's going to happen is uh, the uh, Runtime library is going to jump into our program and look for this main method and start at the beginning of this method uh, and then run all of the code until we reach the end of the method and then exit out of the program. So uh, let's do this. I'm going to put another statement in the console and notice it pops up some um, options. It knows that we have access to this console object. And then we're going to type, type dot, which is the access operator, and a W, and you can see now it has uh, some options here. I'm going to hit tab to complete rate line, and I'm going to say hello, IT1050 students. And so now we have two statements inside of our main method. We have a console rate line, hello world. Um, this is the object, the access operator the method that we're calling, and then in parentheses we're, we're sending in an argument or value 
this value in the string is going to be output to the console window. We end the statement with a semicolon. Not every language and, and even not even not every statement in C sharp ends in a semicolon. Uh, this one, however, does. So this is a single programming statement. All right, then we move to the next line and we have a console.write line, hello IT1050 students. So let's go ahead and run this now. So in Replit, we can go to the top of the window and press this run button and it's going to take our code and compile it and run it and any output that we have such as those right line statements will be output to this console window so that's pretty much it when you're done with the assignment so after you've got all of these steps done and I'm gonna have a console.write line statement here for the hello uh, James and then I'm going to have an output statement here for uh, outputting my major and when I'm done, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click Submit. And uh, that will notify me as your instructor that you have submitted the file. And that's it. That's how we use Replit. I can go back to my home screen. Uh, I'm sorry, my team, uh, home, my home team page. And uh, see that I've got this lab one. I can work further on it if I want and click resubmit. Um, just know that when it's graded it's done. Um, and that's it. That's how we're going to work on our projects this semester. So um, at the beginning of the week I'll send out a notification that uh, we're in the new lesson and I'll send out a notification for the new um, lab which you'll find in Replit. Uh, so, so log in and at the beginning of the week I would log into Replit and make sure that you can fork the project and work on it. Um, obviously the projects are going to get more in-depth and uh, cover more material so that they'll take time to work on. But if you could at the very beginning of the week just make sure that you see the project to fork it uh, and then you can let me know right away if you don't have access to the lab so we can get that resolved quickly. Okay, thanks.